Good evening, everybody. It's uh, 1.30. Welcome to something I want to start. Hello? Welcome to a series I want to start called Zen with Ryzen because quite frankly, I'm tired. I don't, I just want to sit down and just discuss and have a lovely little time. That's kind of it. That's the premise. I'm outside. It's a lovely day, a whopping 78 degrees after it's been raining for literal weeks. This is just such a wet summer. Let me know if you guys experience this as well, but for some reason, the trees this year have yet to fully green. As in, there are some spots sporadically throughout all of the nature where it looks like they've started to decay, like it's fall. But it was like that in June. I don't know. Today, we're going to be playing a little game called, hello, I'm not centered. Mind your business about the background. I mean, it's really none of your business anyway. What's going on? I'm just kidding. I'll tell you. Uh, basically, my father is redoing shit. He's a tinker fairy. Like, actually, he's a carpenter. <laughs> and um, he just like felt like redoing the entirety of my upstairs hallway one day. So that's the remnants of that. But regardless, today I just want to play a fun little game of overrated, underrated, or imperfectly rated. Overrated, underrated, imperfectly rated. Because I saw the Cernia Electricals do it, and I was like, that's a great fucking idea. And it's just like mindless conversation, and I just like want to like chill the fuck out. I need it. Let's just get the fuck into it. The first one I have written down is blankets. <laughs> I think blankets are perfectly rated. Perfectly rated, I think blankets are because they get the job done. They keep you warm and they never fail to have a cozy vibe to them. Unless they're scratchy, then that's not fun. But they're also kind of versatile. You can make forts with them. You can sit on them. You can put them over you to keep you warm. I just think blankets are perfectly rated and I think that they honestly do their job perfectly and nothing can ever replace them, you know? Nothing can really do their job. Like, if you're, like, by the pool or at the beach or whatever and it starts getting cold, there's no way in hell I'm going to put a towel over me and enjoy it. I mean, I'll have to do it, of course, but there's no way in hell I'll do that and be like, mm, this is hitting the spot because it's not a blanket. Okay, moving on. Next one, Snapchat. <laughs> I think Snapchat is underrated. I'm sorry. I think it's underrated and I think people that are like mm, you still use snapchat are first of all mostly millennial Zuh. what more could you ask for you can text you can update people about what you're doing in your life by posting about it and you can have your private story and you can send a picture of what you're doing in that instant instantly you can instantly send a photo of what you're doing or instantly send a photo of what's happening. Or like, oh hey, I just saw this, it reminded me of you. Send a picture. I love Snapchat. I do, I really do. And you can save it to your memories. I feel like memories is just a fan fancy way of saying, of just being your camera roll. But also, no one else is doing a year ago today like Snapchat is. Sorry. Sorry. Fucking kill me over it. I don't care, burn me at the stake for it. I love Snapchat, okay? They kind of got crazy with the replays i think that's what they're called i don't know really what they're called the it's like basically they're trying to be TikTok. i don't like that but i do love stories think about it we would not have stories instagram stories TikTok stories facebook stories does facebook have stories i don't know we wouldn't have any of that without snapchat so i love snapchat okay next christmas ham <laughs> Now, for those of you that don't know, I don't really know if anyone knows this. I'm sure I've said it, people just don't listen, but I love ham. Ham is my all-time favorite meat for some reason, but I eat chicken the most. I don't know where, why. Chicken's just more like accessible and you can just more versatile, but I love ham. Throw ham in a sandwich, throw ham on pizza, throw ham. I guess that's it. Cube it up, put it in a salad, I guess. I just love ham so much. You can, I love the honey ham, smoked ham, smoked honey ham, but specifically 
Christmas ham. Christmas, Christmas ham. <laughs> Christmas ham. I'm doing the thing where um, Trixie Mattel was like, have you noticed people have crunchy R's? Or crispy R's, you got crispy, crispy cream. I've always, okay, side note, I've always noticed, noticed that people have crispy R's. I've never been able to, I don't, I've never been able to put a finger on like what they're called or what it's called. Or just, I just was like, it's an accent, whatever. But I noticed Kourtney Kardashian has it. And something about crispy R's. <sighs> so unnecessary. I didn't need to go into that tangent, but it's like, I don't know. Uh, something about Christmas ham is always going to do it for me. And I'm pissed because I haven't had Christmas fam. Ooh, I haven't had Christmas ham with my Christmas fam in years. For some reason, they always want to switch it up. And I'm a man of tradition. I love tradition. It's the most masculine thing about me. I love tradition. And I love just coming together annually to do something as a family. What's that thing where it's like, um, oh my God, what is it called? The feeling when... People come together. Human, human effervescence. I think that's more reserved for like concerts. I don't know why I'm saying all this, but I love Christmas ham because it just hits different on Christmas. There's really not much more to it. And I think that it's underrated as fuck. I think Christmas ham is underrated. I think ham as a whole is underrated. If someone comes up to me and says, I love turkey more than ham, more than ham? You love turkey more than ham? I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I am judging you. Because ham is moist, it's supple, it's soft. It's like dark meat. Of, it's like the dark meat of all the meats. And turkey, it's like dry. It's the white meat of all meats. I love turkey legs because I just love dark meat. But, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, hello. Get out of my hammock. There's bugs all over me. My face feels so dry. My face is like gasping for air. Is it because I haven't washed it in a couple days? For sure. For sure. Yeah, Christmas ham is underrated in my opinion. Next, arm chairs slash accent chairs. I think they're underrated. I don't think people are really talking about accent chairs enough. I think that they can fill up a space so... Hello. I think an accent chair can f fill up a space and add the perfect touch to something perfectly. I love an accent chair so much. Even if no one sits in it, I'm going to love it every time. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I love an accent chair, actually. You want a pop of color and pillows aren't really sufficing? Accent chair. You need an extra place to sit? Accent chair. You need, honestly, a place to throw all your shit? As a catch-all, accent chair. You have a really fun pillow that you just don't think fits on the couch, but you have an accent chair, throw it on the accent chair. I love accent chairs. Okay, next up. I'm not dreading this one. I'm just really passionate about this one. Millennial gray and or minimalism. Maybe I should separate. No, we'll do both. I think minimalism is starting to become overrated because of how saturated it is and i think millennial gray is satan reincarnated i think it is so fucking overrated and i think it's it millennial gray there's nothing more scorpio than sucking the life and sucking the color out of something sorry it's a little personal for me but i love scorpios when they aren't getting on my nerves but i just think that millennial gray for those of you that don't know the millennial generation is the Scorpio Pluto generation. I'm just going to assume that if you're watching me, you are also a part of the astrology community. If you don't know anything about it, maybe I'll teach you one day. For now, Google it. Google is free. But I just think millennial gray and minimalism kind of sucks the life out of everything. For so long, I've kind of rode the wave of minimalism. Like, I love minimalism. I love the clean look, which is true to some extent. I, I do like that look, but I'm not a fan of the completely void of all things vibe. It's like modern houses or modern apartment complexes, gray floors, gray cabinets, white walls, gray walls, like just gray. That is so gross to me. It's, it's like draining to be around. 
I don't know if you've noticed, but the likelihood of you getting extremely tired in a space like that quickly is so fucking high, opposed to like being in a place with colors and warmth to it. You feel cozy and relaxed in a warmth in a warm, cozy area, opposed to drained, exhausted, because I feel like it takes more work for your eyes to like, I feel like it takes more energies, holy shit, I'm getting really worked up. I feel like it takes more energy for your eyes to like, take in something that's completely grayscale than it is something that has color to it. I don't know, I have to move on. Next, the yearning and the desire to be famous. I think it's overrated. Ooh, I think it's overrated, contrary to my deeply instilled belief that I'm going to be one day. That's been deep within me for, since I was born. But I'm starting to like, I think it's overrated. I think too many people want to be famous because with the rise of the internet and the rise of fame being so attainable almost, I feel like it's become overrated. I don't know, it's just like, I think it's too saturated of a desire to the point where it's like now, yeah, it's easy, but it's also like now you have to work extra hard. Well, I guess maybe you have to work extra hard to have your own personality, to have your own brand because of how saturated the industry. You have to work extra hard to stand out. And I think that that is, that's hard to do. That's hard to do, especially in a world full of inauthentic people. I'm sitting here editing this video. And I want to elaborate more on this because I don't think I did a good job talking about fame and like the desire to be be famous. Too many people want it. And since the rise of TikTok and having internet be so accessible, I feel like since the internet is so accessible and since it's almost so like attainable to become famous, everyone just wants it because they think that it's going to be easy and they think that it's going to do whatever. And everyone thinks that like, everyone thinks it's just easy, okay? That's all I can really say, like more. Like everyone just thinks it's easy, if that makes sense. And I feel like since it's so easy to blow up, that means that it's easy money or it's easy X, Y, Z. And I think that's the part where I was trying to say like, that's where you have to work extra hard to build your own, build your own brand so that your viral video or your viral moment can last, can last because yeah, it's easy to blow up. It's easy to get like a couple thousand, maybe even a couple hundred thousand, close to maybe even a couple million likes on a TikTok. But it's like, how often do you see people blow up and then be able to keep that going? I feel like the last time I even saw that happen was like Brittany Broski with her kombucha meme. And she talks about it all the time too, how it's hard to keep that kind of virality going. It's hard to build a fan base from that. It's hard to continue going. And I feel like that's where people fail to see as a fame. And that's where people fail to do it. And it's, but it's also just like in a world where individuality is almost stripped from us, yet we crave it so much, it's hard to find something that is uniquely yours. It's hard to find something that sure everyone else does but you do it exceptionally well and that stands out. I don't know, it's crazy. Am I making sense? I don't think I am. Scrap all of that. I don't wanna get canceled for having a weird opinion that I don't even, I'm not even like that confident in. Anyways, I just think that the desire for fame is extremely overrated now. That's not to say that I still don't have it. I definitely do. I think it's huge in my generation to like want that, but I don't know, it's just overrated to me. Next, surprises. I think surprises are, I think they're kind of perfectly rated. (laughs) I think surprises are, if appropriate, really fun. I'm not the biggest fan of surprises because I love control, but not even that I love control. I find myself always joking about how I'm such a control freak, but I'm actually really not. I think that a lot of the things I do, a lot of the insecurities that I project come from a place of wanting control but I think as a whole I think control is almost too much responsibility for me and I'm also scared by it it's really conflicting but like I'm I I find myself being like whatever fuck it it is what it is or just like go with the flow more times than I more times than not I think there's a healthy amount of control that a lot um people can have regardless I think surprises in and of themselves are finely rated rated I don't think they're overrated I don't think they're underrated surprises are cool they're cute Um, 
as long as they don't completely throw off a person's like want for control i think it's fine be like hey i got this for you that's a cute little surprise oh hey i just got you this coffee because i know you like it so fucking cute i love that you thought about me enough to spend your own money and get me this that is so cute and i'll eternally be grateful for people like that surprise parties cool cute i love it especially if the person is kind of like i find that a common theme within my generation i don't even know if it's gen z i think a common theme within people is like feeling horrible on their birthday expecting not a lot so i think it's super cute to just be like hey we thought about you enough to be like we want to throw you this party because we know that you damn i'm projecting heavy right now um surprises are cool they're perfectly rated moving on (laughs) this whole video is me just being like hey this is what i want in life this is what i need i want people to think about me i'm lonely god so sad uh next the cetaphil face wash specifically the one for what is it called i think the one with the like darker blue handle cap thingy perfect i love it i think it's honestly a little underrated i don't think enough people are using it i guess they don't have to it's in my opinion the best face wash i've ever used it's not really like i've um explored though i have really sensitive skin so it's like i find something that works for me perfect I also want to throw in the CeraVe CeraVe lotion, the blue one, with hyaluronic acid in it. I love that lotion. Oh my god. I am, if that lotion has no fucking fans or no supporters or no buyers, it's because I'm dead. I'm deceased. Bitch, I love that lotion so fucking much. I love a water-based lotion. I think that's the only way to do hydration. I think it's the only way to do moisturizing. Moisturization. If you feel comfortable putting heavily scented fucking silicone waxy shit on your body that's leaving you feeling heavy and like sticky and greasy, good for you. I'm really glad that works for you and your skin. That does not work for me. I can't sit here and feel hydrated if there's pounds of fucking wax, pounds of silicone on my body. It's clogging all of my pores and it's making me feel greasy and trapped in my own fucking skin. It's making me feel heavy and gross. I feel like I need to put more, I I feel like I need to get in the shower again. So the CeraVe lotion is amazing. You can use it on your face, you can use it on your body, you can use it everywhere. I fucking love that lotion so much and I think it's extremely underrated. Next, kind of on the topic of hygiene as well, body wash and bar of soap, both together. I think body wash is overrated. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. And I think bar of soap is underrated. Let me defend myself. Let me defend myself. Let me defend myself. Again, it's stated. I have super sensitive skin. I've yet to find a body wash that doesn't dry me out and but still makes me feel squeaky clean. Every body wash I've used has made me feel goopy, has made me feel like I'm not really doing anything. But the Dial Antibacterial Bar of Soap, it not only does it smell amazingly clean, when I'm done using it, and I I originally got it because I got this tattoo, right? I got this tattoo, love her. Obviously, you need to wash it. I feel like that's like where... I don't need to be showing this off. I feel like most people know that bar of soap, this bar of soap specifically because of getting a tattoo and just needing to wash it with antibacterial soap. That's how I found out about it. But then I was like, why don't just wash my whole body with it? So I did it. Guys, it seriously, like when I wash my body with other soaps, other body washes, other bar soaps or whatever, it makes me feel like if I do this, it makes me feel slimy and like there's still dead skin on me. When I wash myself with the antibacterial bar soap from Dial, I can do this. And it literally is like squeaky fucking clean. I can't, I'm so clean that I can't drag my finger across my body without it like, like the friction of my skin being so fucking clean and raw. I love it so much. And the best part is it doesn't dry me out. It doesn't dry me out. I love this fucking soap so much. I think that the dial back to your antibacterial soap, I think it's underrated when people use it for their body. People use it for tattoos and they're like, cool, it's whatever. But when you use it for your body, my sensitive skin girls know, though. It's like, because I have eczema. I don't want to hear it. Eczema. 
I did it for you. There. I can't use shit. I just saw like five different bugs that all look different and I'm actually really convinced it was a fairy. I'm not even fucking kidding. I'm not, I'm not playing around. But I love this fucking soap so much. We have to move on or else I'm, I, won't, I won't stop. Next, magic as a superpower. Okay, I think this is extremely underrated. Okay, I think magic as a superpower is underrated. The most powerful bitch in the DC universe, we'll get to Marvel and DC, which is real, like right after this, but I think one of the most powerful bitches ever is Raven. Raven from Teen Titans. I don't want to hear it. I'm not willing to fight on it, and I'm going to die on this fucking hill. May okay, maybe not the most powerful, but her father is like DC's version of Satan. Hello? I think that magic is extremely OP, and the people that don't see that are delusional. I think the people that don't see that are delusional, and I'm completely calling out the Cerniola triplets, because when they were doing... They did a video where they fucking listed a bunch of superpowers in a row, which honestly I might have to do because they got it so wrong. They got it so entirely wrong. Their opinions are incorrect because magic should have been higher on that fucking list. You can do anything with magic. Any, any of the fucking superpowers they listed, you can do with magic. So why not have them all at your fucking fingertips? That brings me to my next thing. Marvel and DC. I think Marvel is a little overrated, you guys. I think Marvel's a little overrated, and I think that DC is underrated. My parents are home. Who fucking knows where they went? But I just think that Marvel is overrated and DC is underrated, and I'm really not willing to, like, dive further into that. I'm also biased because Teen Titans, the original cartoon from 2003, is deeply ingrained into my core and who I am as a human being. Rapid fire last ones. College. Overrated. I just, like, especially with the access that we as humanity have we as people have to the internet i think that there's really i think it's really pointless to spend countless of dollars like hundreds of thousands of dollars on something you can learn online <laughs> i'm not really sorry about that and if you want to fight me on it it's gonna be one-sided because i really don't give a fuck i understand the benefits that can come with college i i understand choosing one thing and just kind of honing in on that and just really learning that skill but I think that life is too unpredictable and life is too honestly short to devote yourself to one thing that you might not even want to partake in. And like, it can be as short of a time span as like a couple of weeks. You can like make up your mind about, oh, I don't really want to fucking do this anymore in a couple of weeks. And I just think it's a lot of money wasted. And like, you can just learn so much through life and experiences. I'm a creative person. That's where I'm coming from. Music. I learned how to make music by picking up fucking GarageBand in middle school and just fucking around and seeing what worked and copying my favorite songs, hearing all the different layers, copying the beat pattern, copying this and that. I'm, I'm literally a fucking mockingbird. Like, mockingjay? What's the word? I just think that you can learn so much by just diving into it instead of wasting so much money on it. Okay, for me, college is overrated. For a lot of other people, it's not. Moving the fuck on. The next one, TikTok, uh, overrated. Last one, auto caps lock. I think this is such a weird way, a weird note to end on, but I think that the auto caps is like, I think it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I think just as like, as a Gen Zer, I just think that it's like cringy. <laughs> There's not else, but it's like, I understand it's more professional, but it's like, I think you can get the same message across with the same tone by not capitalizing the beginning of your sentences. I don't really think it matters that much. So in a way, I think that auto caps is very, it's just a little like overrated. Like you, there's just like, I think it's doing too much. And especially if you have a huge opinion about it, I think you're doing way too much. I think you're doing way too much. That's so unprofessional because I didn't fucking capitalize my eyes because I didn't put a capital letter, letter at the beginning of my sentence. There's so many bigger fish to fry like for real like why don't you worry about let me stop i'm done i have to be done with this video i hope you enjoyed it um I, this was zen with ryzen where we can be equally as philosophical as we are chaotic because balance is about embracing all sides of all emotions whether that's good or bad and i don't know what i'm 
at the end, every time I film a video, at the end of it, I become extremely delirious. I don't know why. I don't know what the science or psychology is behind that, but I have to go. I'm starving. And, um, bye. You look like the 4th of July. Makes me want a hot dog real bad. No, I did not celebrate the 4th of July. Bye.